Joining me now is Colin Lee from Jaguar Land Rover. Colin, thanks for talking with Telecom TV. I'd like to ask you, first of all, what is JLR's role within the connected mobility sector and, and, and what's your involvement and participation in 5G AA? The reason why we're involved in 5G AA is about seven, eight years ago, we, as Jaguar Land Rover and a couple of other OEMs, which are now, of course, part of 5G AA, were struggling to be able to communicate with the world easily. So we needed to have a, uh, I was part of the original um, founder, if you like, team that sat down and decided this is what we needed to do. Um, once we started pulling that team together and we started getting interest from MNOs and, and various other people, you know, mobile network operators, it became obvious that once we started working together, we weren't experts of um, communication that we thought we were. And equally, the the, the MNOs in the communication world didn't, didn't really understand cars. So, once we started talking and realizing that simple things like we need quality of service of communications and stuff like that, really? Well, we, we, we didn't realize you needed that. So therefore, we started working on technology with them or working on the ways of improving those links so that we can actually have a better um, communication level at data level, if you see me. That's, that's what happened. It was as simple as that. So what we've... Now that we're sort of about five years into the 5G era or so, we're coming from 3G, 4G, we've got more yeah. capabilities with 5G. What role does 5G play today in the sector? So I think what's happened over the years is that we've become more and more reliant on being connected. There's all kinds of things that we can do when we're connected, like update the car, so you don't have to go to... Um, to get it repaired as much because we realized that actually we could repair something quicker by just updating the car, same as your PC. And what's happened is as you go from 3G, 4G, you can do things faster and more. Uh, and then 5G again. And then of course in the future, there's other things that we can do to improve that again. The main thing about cars these days is being always being connected is the most important thing because if you want to update a car and you can't because it's not connected, then, then you can't do it. Whereas if you are connected then you can do lots of things to help the car everything from like help uh, diagnose issues in the car to supporting uh, use cases and features for the customer help the customer journey you know keep keep in touch with what they want to do so you just can't do that on a, if you go back to the old cars like uh, the old jaguars they were great cars they looked great but they weren't integrated with the customer journey so as the telecoms industry keeps developing its technology as we go into the the, the the, the, the second half of 5G, we get 5G advanced, and now he's looking at the, the next generation. Technology is always progressing here. Um, if, if, if we look ahead a bit, if we look ahead five, six years or so um, into the next decade, how do you see 5G and, and, and cellular connectivity technologies playing a role in the connectivity, the mobile connectivity sector? I think we need to break this down to three sections. So today we're pretty much, we, we share warnings. We get it all the time. You get things like there's technologies out there we can tell you there's a stationary vehicle and all that kind of thing. So you've got warnings today. Then the next stage is where you start communicating with someone. So if you've got intersections, you can say, well, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, okay, well, the road says you can go first. So therefore I'll stop and you carry on. Oh, good, right. So that can all be happening behind the scene. So you don't get crashes at, um, at junctions. You see what I mean? And then ultimately when we get to autonomous level, you need to do a whole load of more uh, things to make sure that you're controlling the world. So we may not have any traffic lights at some point, for example. We might have everybody following a path and, and, and literally everybody goes, like, literally you, you go up to someone like this and they turn last minute because the, all the cars know where they're going. So that's a utopian moment, but the journey is much harder than that. You have to go through the, okay, now we're doing this, have we got the right stuff to do that? That's what we're going to do next after this. So do we need a better um, environment to do that? And more importantly, we have to be in agreement as to what is good and what is bad on each one of those levels. It's really complex, but the benefits are great safety, comfort, and you just, the, whole, the driver doesn't even know. They just become much more safe without realizing it. Does the mobility sector get this generally? Do, do you have buy-in from, I can see the, 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 the telecom operator interest, I can see the telecom technology vendor interest, but from these automotive and mobility um, industries and those OEMs, do, do they see it now? Absolutely. Every single OEM I know anyway, really get excited about this. But more importantly, because we're getting excited about it, the road operators are getting excited about it because they're now saying, well, hang on, we now know how many cars are going to be coming through these set of traffic lights. So I can change the switch, switch these kind of like phasing around a bit more. 
we know about emergency vehicles coming around. We know what we can almost tell the customer where we want them be placed so that the ambulance can go whizzing through. Um, but, um, but the governments are really into this because when you start looking at the facts and figures, I mean, you only have to look at, I mean, I've seen some figures that are horrendous that where people are getting killed, like vulnerable road users, where literally you literally walk out on the road. Uh, imagine walking in front of a bus. Uh, kids do it all the time. You didn't know. But what we can do is we can either use a bus camera or we can have a phone in their pocket that's telling the car that there's someone now starting to walk in front of the bus. The car will automatically understand that and it's got a choice of either informing the customer or taking action, or both. So, so if it needs to take action, it will take action. And, and the beauty of it is that nobody knows, apart from the fact that the person's now walking across the road alive, if you know what I mean, without being dramatic. But it's beautiful because it, we don't have that situation today. And if you look at the figures, they're horrendous. They, this is, I mean, especially, in, I think the US is terrible. Um, you know, that's the reason why I think this is really going to make a massive difference. I, I want to sort of ask what's required for us to get to that stage. And, and listening to you, you, you speak there, it, it's, it seems really apparent that latency, for example, is, is, a, is a massive factor because you, you can't wait around for seconds or even milliseconds. It's got to be instantaneous uh, communication here. So, so what is it that we need to achieve the goals we set for ourselves? Well, the interesting thing is we've got quite a lot of it already. So first of all, we need to all agree that what we're going to do. Otherwise, if you don't have consensus, you can't really, you know, you have to send a certain amount of data to understand it. So you have to have a trigger of an event of some kind, like, I don't know, someone's crossing the road. Then you need to have an idea of what the, what's happening in terms of speed and what direction they're going in. So if I've got those two things, I can then make a decision whether I need to take action on it. What is the, the, the main objective of, of 5GA? What, what, is, what, what does 5GA want to a, a accomplish? Who does it need to talk to? Who do you need to talk to? What sort of ecosystem are we talking about here? Initially, we thought it was just the OEMs and the communications industry. I mean, to be honest, that's what we thought we needed. Then we realized, ah, we still need, we need to talk to the roadside uh, people. Because at the same time, you know, we, we, whatever we do on the road, the roadside guys, need, you know, the, the ones that look after traffic lights and, you know, the gantries and stuff, we need to talk to those too. So we have been. Then we realized, well, hang on, a lot of that stuff is govern the government based. So we have to then work with the governments. And, and then we've got standards we have to wear out. So what, what 5G... AA is trying to do is we're literally trying to kind of pull, pull all these people together to a common common interest. So road safety is obviously one of the things we're interested in, but better service for the customer journey is what some other uh, industries want to do. But ultimately to, to kind of pull this into the same bucket so that the, the, the experience of driving is so effortless. You know, you don't need to worry about parking, you know, cost paying for parking. You have to worry about, I don't know, whether somebody's going to be over that, you know, go over the hill. Is there a traffic jam on the other side of that hill? You don't know. Um, I'm going to say something that's probably a little bit weird, but it's, it's going to make some sense to you. Um, we've, if I compare it to a human being, you, you've got eyes. So does a car. It has loads of sensors. It can see quite a long distance. But your ears determine your safety. I can hear people downstairs. I can hear people that I can't even see. Do you get a sense of safety? So what, what V2X does, it can see with its ears, because it's got long ears, it can hear from up to a kilometer away on one direction, even beyond that through, through other means. It has an idea now, like a road, a, a heat map of what's going on around it. So basically it can now go, right, well, I know what's going on over there. I know what's going on over there. So therefore I'm going to make this decision to do this. We can't do that today. So if you try it one day, put, cover your ears and try and figure out whether you feel differently. As soon as you undo the ears again, you suddenly realise that you've got more information. The car has never had this experience before. To be able to see beyond the horizon, do stuff like see there's a big lorry in front of you, be able to see through the lorry um, and, and then know what's going on and then and, and adjust it for it. You see what I mean? So it's a completely different mindset. This is what I love about the V2X technology. Exciting possibilities. Colin, thanks very much for talking well, with us. 